Aquarius, welcome to a weekly tarot spread for August 3rd through the 9th. It's Raina here, and I got this from the Emerald Lotus Divination on Pinterest. It's a, a spread that uh, that site created, and I am using the Lightseer's tarot deck. Here's the what it looks like. This is the booklet, at least. Really great booklet, by the way, so... Occasionally I've been reading uh, passages from it when I've been doing these readings. I usually don't do weekly readings, but I wanted to test drive these, and I really am enjoying them. Okay, the first card is your week as a whole, and it's the Two of Wands, so there may be a decision that has to do with relocation. There can be, like, maybe you're at a crossroads and deciding between two uh, professions. Or if you're a student between two majors that will lead to profession, you know, a pr particular profession that you're going to go into. Um, you know, this, if you look at what the wands represent, they represent creativity and freedom. So a lot of times, you know, and passion. So it's not just practical concerns that may be things you're weighing. You might be thinking about, is um, this something that I will enjoy going to and doing every day? The second position is something unexpected that will arise, and this is the Queen of Pentacles. So this is a card of the home and how money um you know, plays into it. This is a card of, this can be like a good money card where you get unexpected money that um, uh, you didn't expect. Yeah, that's how it works, right? Unexpected money. And um, it's a very uh, good card for money in general. And um, I would, this is, I've already read about this card, but I'm going to just do it again for you in case you're interested in this. Um, the, the key words are healer, a working parent, a self-made person, material wealth and abundance, strength in family and community, a kind and nurturing heart, groundedness, being down to earth, earth generosity. So queens can be mothers, and with pentacles, with the queen of pentacles, there can be like this domestic type of association with uh, work. So you know, uh, referencing that first card about some kind of a decision, you may, maybe you get this offer, you know, do you want to work from home? And based upon um, whatever, you know, what else is going on in the world, and even if you never uh, stayed home before, and you've been working this whole time, this still could come up, and you would have to really think about that because usually Aquarius is a sign because it's a masculine sign it tends to want to leave the home and you know kind of be out in the world and not just be in that enclosed space that is more personal and is associated with the feminine energy so that's not something that the average Aquarian would just jump at the chance to do even if you have children because you might feel that you need that balance of being outside if you're raising a family so that you don't feel claustrophobic, like you're, you know, stuck, but there might be some way that it appeals to you. And maybe it has some kind of financial side to it, or, or like that feeling of freedom, that you don't have to be in an office and and have, or maybe it's like flex time where you're going to, you know, at least have part of the time at home. And the third position is how can I stay grounded and balanced? We have another wands, another fire energy, ace of wands, which is associated with beginning a creative project, beginning a business, something that will, um, you know, exercise your sense of self-expression and not so much take your mind off of whatever it is that you're trying to decide about but there's some kind of an expansive 
quality by doing this, by creating something. And maybe it, it helps you to create freedom, make space in your life for something. But, in, you know, with a lot of people, creativity is a great way of staying grounded because it, it's a way to communicate and get out those feelings that sometimes can be very intense uh, that we all have from time to time. Four, important emotion I will feel this week. Oh, this one got buried. Another ace, another beginning. Ace of Pentacles. And this is a beginning of a financial nature. So yes, uh, I wonder how many Aquarians are starting new employment, um, starting a new money-making venture. One thing that I wanted to say about this period in the first week is that there is a full moon in your sign. So that's an interesting development too, astrologically. For those of you who are born in January, this is probably going to be in your 12th house because it's at 11 degrees of Aquarius. So for that first 10 days or so. If you are, but that might not be, in some cases, uh, there might be like the, tw the 30th and the 31st, January 31st and 30th and 31st might be actually um, 11 degrees in some years. Um, for the other people, this will be in the first house. And this is a very interesting thing because I really think that the 12th and the first houses can speak about personal change. For the 12th house, people, the January people, this is more, and this is also for if this is your rising sign, you know, um, up to 10 degrees is in the 12th house of Aquarius, obviously. <laughs> and uh, if, if it is in the 12th house, this is more on an internal level that um, maybe a self-defeating pattern is able to leave your life. Perhaps you are um, quitting some addiction. You know, in the Farmer's Almanac, they they cite uh, when the moon is in Aquarius for a time of being able to, the full moon is in Aquarius, a time of being able to drop bad habits. So apparently it's particularly easy at that time. Maybe because Aquarius is a sign of, you know, rebellion, wanting to, you know, change, a lot of change. Um, wanting that freedom. And, you know, a full moon can be illuminating, so it can give you insight into, you know, what makes you tick at a subconscious or unconscious level. In the first house... This could be even something to do physically, because it can be the body, where you want to change your body. Um, you want to, you're tired of, of the old and you want something new. Something has to give, you know. Um, but just changing your life in general, but more on the conscious level. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense that you're getting these aces because where there's endings, there's also beginnings. So an important emotion, ace of pentacles. Emotions are not really connected to pentacles per se, but maybe we could call it an important trend this week rather than emotion. I've been kind of tweaking these a little because they don't really work for me. I've decided some of the uh, wording. The fifth position is something that will inspire you, King of Swords. So you are Swords. Maybe it's a grand idea. Maybe it's um, the inspiration is coming from a very detached perspective where you're not um, kind of being swayed by anything emotional and um, you have like a brilliant idea. With the King of Swords, we're talking about the highest level of what the swords represent, which is logic. And um, 
and maybe this is a person if you have a swords person who you consider very intelligent or wise so we're talking about Gemini a, a fellow Aquarian or a Libra person that individual may be somebody that can be a great sounding board that can give you advice but coming from a rational viewpoint instead of sentimental instead of um, you know just looking at it from I would say even the spiritual perspective because sometimes we just want advice that makes sense to us on the mundane level six how my spirit guides will speak to me this week I have changed that to what message do my spirit guides want to give me this week and this is your card the star card and I really like this depiction because if I'm not mistaken the birthstone of Aquarius is the amethyst and it has to do with the um, intuitive quality that the amethyst represents. Maybe I shouldn't say quality but the intuitive influence. And um, you know the purple is I think the seventh chakra or at least the sixth chakra this kind of uh, shade. No, I think it's indigo is a six, so this would be the seventh, which is like kind of that super consciousness. So the star card is about faith and unseen forces and spirit guides and crossover loved ones. So I, I'm going to, since this is your card, I'm going to read from the booklet. I've never read anything from the uh, Major Arcana in here. And they say, expectations fulfilled, wishes granted, opportunities, healing after traumatic events, knowing you are on the right path, inspiration, renewed hope. Step onto a path of fulfillment and happiness with starlight to guide you. Allow your innate essence to shine through any residual darkness right now. Uncover any uh, uh, limit, limiting beliefs or self-doubt that you're holding on to. Find the courage to voice any unexpressed emotions and release every bit of outgrown energy that is anchoring you to the past. So that certainly goes along with the full moon in the 12th house, but even the first house. Um, so yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't have said it better myself. Seventh, how to best support yourself this week. So this is advice and what you can do. Four of Wands. This is a card of domestic bliss, joy, joyful home life, so with the Queen of Pentacles, enjoy your home, enjoy your family. Don't feel like um, you have to do too much outside. Maybe you need a staycation. Maybe it's time to um, kind of like chill and just seek joy. If you're, if you consider yourself a bit of a workaholic, if you have a lot of inner planets and Capricorn especially, you may look at life in a very, in a more serious way. Um, and if you do work from home, you may feel like you already have a vacation because you don't have to travel to work or be in an office. But, you know, it can get tricky because it becomes a lot easier to spend too much time immersed in that area of life and then you never really get away from it and relax. So um, I would say, you know, you've got the wands energy so that certainly speaks to fire signs. Your opposite sign, Aquarius, is Leo and of course we have Leo energy during this time, the sun but there may be a Leo person in your life. The other fire signs are Sagittarius and Aries. And uh, so any communication with these people may be very um, enjoyable to you. Maybe they light your fire in some way. So that's what I have for you, Aquarius. I hope that you enjoyed this. 
If you'd like a personal reading, the link is below. Take care. Bye.